Information discussed on Pocket Money with Jeff Tarbell is believed to be from reliable sources. However, no responsibility is assumed for inaccuracies. No statement made on this broadcast should be construed as a specific recommendation of a particular investment product. Views expressed are those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent those of CBS Radio. News only is directed. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. And prepare yourself for... Show me the money! Ladies and gentlemen... The radio broadcast experience designed to keep your wallet in top condition. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking Money. Talking Money. More money, more money, more money. And now entering the studio, your guru for fiscal fitness, Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? Whoa, sounds different when you're in the, actually in the building. <clears throat> I clear my throat out. I don't know. <clears throat> maybe I maybe I shouldn't have taken on the wine tour t- test last night, Chris. I don't. I'm not a wine drinker, and my wife is uh, adamantly wants me to get you know to drinking wine with her. And I don't I don't know why she wants me to start drinking wine with her. All it does is goes twice as fast. They don't give the wine away, and I don't not like wine i just don't like crappy wine there's a di- or as a difference right so i and I then like- you have to know oh this is a nice uh yeah nice, nice bouquet 74 yeah, that's uh, right you got to come across like a you know like a snob and um it has nice chocolate finish yeah i can smell the caramel in there or is that just a hint of sage i'm not sure which so i don't you know everybody's in a hurry to get me to drinking wine is you know i just I'd rather just go out and smoke the 30 bucks in the parking lot, you know, and I mean, literally just smoke the dollar bills. It's the same thing. It goes away just as fast. But anyway, we had a, um, little, and according to your uh, quiz the other day, that probably has cocaine on it. That's, that's no wonder I'm, I'm always such a good mood when I smoke a good single. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. So, um, we, we got, we, uh, Kim and I were invited up to the uh, Hellwig winery up in uh, Plymouth last night to do a little tour. Don't be surprised if you don't hear them as a sponsor in the, in, in the near future. Just a phenomenal place. I mean, they just put a boatload of money into uh, just just building the place. It's just a, such a beautiful spot. So that's uh, Hellwig Winery up in uh, Plymouth. So uh, we were out scouting out some some party locations, and so we'll see if they uh, – you might hear more of them in the, in the, in the near to immediate future as well. So before I get carried away – and I literally, literally have – if, if we wanted to, Chris, we could do an entire New Year's Day show. I have enough information here to do the whole day. We'll just write up until they drop the ball, and then I'll just pass out, and we'll be done. Um, but anyway, before I do that, as we start every show off with 30 seconds from the mind of CV, Chris Verlod. Well, like many people, I will be going out for New Year's Eve this evening, and what I don't like... I can handle the cover charge, but what I don't like is, hey, you pay $15, you get a champagne toast at midnight. And they're acting like, oh, like, we're doing you the favor. No, I'm doing you the favor by paying you $15 to go to your bar, which is just, just say to everyone, you know what? We're charging $15 because we, we can't. <laughs> we, we I'll can. appreciate your, I'll appreciate your truthfulness more than you saying, hey, we're also going to have a breakfast brunch. No, you're not. You're going to have a couple pancakes that everybody's sneezing all over. And that's just going to make me even more mad. So just say, you know what? It's New Year's. Pay the $15 because we're going to take it from you anyways. Right. This is how we make our profit. We're getting it out of you now. So, yeah, I appreciate the honesty. I am not uh, – let's give out the phone numbers here, too, so we can take uh, – anybody wants to jump in today with your uh, brilliance or your BS, we'll take both, 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140, or you can text us at 441140. That looks like that is working. So uh, jump on in if you want to. And I am not a big New Year's Eve fan. In fact, I have this general belief – the, 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 the more low-key I keep my New Year's Eve, the better my next year will be. But then I have, I, have, I have a lot of these superstitions. Like, I believe, like, if the weather is not producing a lot of rain, I won't make a lot of money. So, I mean, I have all these – I don't get it. Maybe I should, you know, should just get off my butt and go work harder, and then I, will just, I can resolve all these problems. But anyway, I have some of these superstitions that I, that I follow. So I'm not a big New Year's Eve person. For me, it's, for me as a business owner over the last 20 years – the change of the calendar is a whopping change, big pain in the rear. I mean, it, it costs money. You've got to 
re up all your approvals. You got to pay your CPAs. You got to do audits. You got to pay your taxes. I mean, for me, the change of the calendar is nothing more than sucking about 10% of the income out of your wallet or more and uh, changing the calendar. So I am not a big New Year's person. I'm not a big, I don't, I don't, it doesn't mean anything to me. I just, but if you're a reveler and you want to get out there and do it, there's, um, I guess you could do it at nine o'clock if you want and get it over with a little earlier. Follow the East Coast, or you can, or you can. Some follow. English uh, bars have it at four o'clock because that's four o'clock today in England. And it, okay, well, so then I have enough stuff to get us to four for sure. We could do that. We could do the four. Let's just let's come in and we'll hang on here. We'll just do the talking money into the New Year show today, and I could do it. Trust me, I could do it. Um, well, I've got. I was trying to figure out, you know, what is what what was really the business story of the year. Or was there one? And I don't think there was one. What stands out to you is kind of the the one thing that stuck out this year business wise. Going through some, you know, a number of articles. I think some of the recent stuff when the MF Global turned up, they were missing a billion dollars from a guy who was supposed to be Mr. Corzine, a genius and a former was he former governor of New Jersey? You know, and the guy shows up in front of the uh, Congress and says, "Boy, I, you know, I really don't know where the money went." You try that. You try try that with your little homeowner association. You just can't find like a hundred and fifty bucks. If you're managing the local soccer club and you're in charge of the uniform money, just try showing up and saying, "I can't even find a couple hundred dollars from there." Ask yourself if you'll still be walking amongst the free. It's no way. So that that was a big story. I don't know if that's the biggest story. That was a big one. I um I guess for me probably I don't know if it's, it's so much of a story as it is a theme. And I was was looking in the I've been carrying this around uh, I guess not that long this is from December twenty seventh the op ed page out of the Wall Street Journal the, the the title was called taxing Kim Kardashian which is really not about Kim Kardashian it's about an organization called the Courage Campaign in California. The Courage Campaign in California is a group that wants wealthy celebrities to speak up about increasing taxes on themselves and other wealthy individuals. There was a quote in here that just made me sick to my stomach. Almost everything that comes out of Harry Reid's mouth makes me sick to my stomach, but this one was interesting. Uh, Two weeks ago, the Nevada Democrat didn't stop at insisting that millionaires turn over more of their money to the federal government. Millionaire job creators are like unicorns. They're impossible to find and don't exist. So basically, Harry Reid doesn't believe that anybody who has money creates jobs. And that we, what was the other quote I underlined here? Any wealth they have is not something that they earned, but something the state allowed them to keep, which is the general consensus of the year. And to me, that seems to be kind of the story of the year. If you want to say that that's the Occupy group, that's part of it. But the general um, anti-money, anti-success, anti-business, anti-whatever, that to me that's kind of is the story of the year to me, which is kind of the turn that if you somehow were able to make money, retain money, Invest and earn on your money. If, if, if that went your way, you're a bad guy or girl or person or entity. And really what you did was you screwed the rest of us out of our money. And that's how you got it, right? You didn't earn it. You stole it. And that's kind of the message we're being told, right? Right? And in some cases, you might be right. Because certainly, when $1.2 billion comes up missing, somebody stole your damn money. Now, that particular person or that company doesn't have the money either. But I certainly get how that um, prevails amongst people. But it is, man... It is a bad lesson, and it's it's a lesson that hopefully we can get around. I mean, growing up, 
over the last 20 years as a 20 something to a 30 something to a 40 something. When I looked at somebody who was wealthy or met somebody who was did well, and believe me, in the last 20 years in this career, I have met everything from pathetically poor to outrageously rich, but mostly in between. People that you would never, ever, ever know that they were exceptionally wealthy. And when I say wealthy, there's not a, I don't, I'm not attaching a dollar amount to that. That doesn't mean 500000 or $500 million. It means wealth in excess of what they earn in, in many cases. People who, when you look at what they do on a daily basis, and then when you look at what they have accumulated, you go, how on earth did you do that? I mean, it's real easy for a guy who, or an individual who's making two, three million dollars a year to have two or three million dollar net worth. But I've had clients that are making 40 grand a year with a two or three million dollar net worth. That's really tough to do. I mean, that's, that's inspiring. So, you know, as I've come through my career and watched people, it's had a huge influence on me. And how you do things, and you and you watch, and, and to the to a person, to a person, these are individuals that have not stolen their money from somebody, didn't inherit it, didn't get the right six numbers on the lotto ticket. They work their ass off, and I'm sorry, that's that's politically incorrect. Not the word ass, but the word the concept of working your ass off, because that isn't romantic. It isn't Hollywood. It isn't a quick fix, and you can't blame somebody for working their ass off. And so people don't like to hear that. People don't want to hear, you know what? I got up really early, and I went to bed really late, and I didn't stop in between the two. And I put some money at risk, and sometimes I lost it, and sometimes I made it. And at the end of the day, I made a little bit more than I put out, hopefully. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun. It sounds like a lot of work. Nobody ever wants to hear that. So we do what? We say, you must have stolen it, or you must have gotten it incorrectly. Because it's easier if you're sitting on your ass doing nothing, or things didn't go well for you, it's easier to say, you know, they must have got it the, some other way. Because then you can justify the reason you didn't make it. And I've had it both ways. I mean, I have lost a lot of money, and I have made a lot of money, sometimes in the same day, you know, and my hope is that you come out at the end, you know, somewhere a little bit ahead of where you would have been if you hadn't taken any risk at all, and that's the fun in it, right? Not so much fun when you're losing, a little more fun when you're winning, but a lot of work in the, me in the meantime, and that's, that's the story that never gets out there because it isn't an interesting story. It isn't, a, you know, it isn't something you see on Hollywood. Yeah, I, you know, individual working hard, running a second business, starting his own business, grinding it out. You know, there was a, there was a, uh, was on the, I think we might talk about that a couple weeks ago on the radio show, talking to the gentleman from, um, uh, which is, what is now Best Buy, but he sold, subsequently sold it. Interesting story, but the shortcut was, hey, folks, for the first 20 years, of running, and I, for the life of me, I can't remember what the business was called before it became Best Buy. But for the first 20 years of that running that business, he virtually made nothing. I mean, probably barely made minimum wage for his time, if that. He was able to convert it to something and sell it and make some money at the end. Does that story get told? No. That ain't sexy. So th that to me is a story of 2011, if you ask me. And I'll ask you, what, what, what's the story for you? What, what did you learn this year? Certainly the mortgage business, and there's been a lot of shakeup in there, has been a huge story. That one isn't over yet. What is the story for you? What did you take out of 2011, good, bad, or indifferent? 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. going to take a quick break here with Chris and I. I've got a quiz question for you. The uh, Hangover Part 2, the movie that was uh, the sequel, which is not nearly as good as the original, is being sued again by a company for part of their movie. The first time they got sued was from the tattoo guy 
and the guy who made the, the Mike Tyson looking tattoo, they, and they settled with him. Now somebody else is suing them. Another company is suing them for uh, one of their products that was used in the movie. So 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140, or you can text me at 441140. I've got some Sierra Tahoe ski passes for you if you want to do some skiing. i got some cupcake craving cupcakes if you want to sit back and have some cupcakes. And I always have some Jim Boys. My name is Jeff Tarbell. This is Talking Money. We'll be right jack back. <laughs> 